So we, we have a good makeup of the community. In fact, when we formed the work group, we figured on 12 members so that we could be productive and things wouldn't get too long. I couldn't believe how many applications came in. We ended up raising that number to 17. So when somebody says, oh, I'll do this for a short period of time, and I can stop whenever I want to, that's a bold-faced lie. Science tells us difference. We, don't, we know we're not getting accurate numbers. The numbers <laughs> I'm giving you are when EMS responds to a scene, and then they call law enforcement, and we come out. We know people are self-presenting at the hospital. So we want to capture all the overdoses. We want a complete and accurate picture of how widespread, what numbers are we missing. We know we're missing them at the hospital. Uh, we're not going to go in there and charge these people, and that's the fear of the legislature, that I'm lying to them in some sense, even though we haven't charged, other than the ones behind the wheel of the car, we haven't charged any of the others, and they were charged with driving under the influence, not with heroin possession. It's the serial killer. It's in every, it's in every neighborhood. Okay, Harper County students who use heroin. You see the, the green line for eighth grade? That was the survey that we did in 07. Uh, the Maryland Youth Risk Survey. Um, then we did the same survey in 2013. So for eighth graders, only 0.6% of the kids were, were trying heroin. 2013, it went up to 2.4% by four times. Younger kids doing harder, harder drugs. 